So today, on the first ever episode of Entrepreneurs in Vehicles Getting Beverages, or Yivgeber, as people will affectionately, <laughs> affectionately call it one day, we're going to meet up with Ryan Daniel Moran, the man so nice they named him thrice. He's, uh, he's a pretty successful character, especially for his age. He owns uh, Capitalism.com. He's got a one-word domain name, which is really good for the ego. I also know more about his bowel movements than I'd care to know, which maybe we'll discuss that as well. And he just moved out, so we're actually driving out to the lake area. Uh, he's called Lakeway outside of Austin. He used to have an apartment downtown, and now he's moved out here. I've known Ryan for a couple of years now. Actually, next week, he's got his event. It's capitalism.com, Capcom conference thing, which a couple years ago, I actually did Camp Gardone, my character on stage. I went up as that guy and helped rile up and jizzer jazzer the crowd. So we're headed out to his new fancy link house, where I think he's got a Tesla ready for us to drive in, which I have driven in them, but I have not been the driver of them, and I'm kind of excited about that. We're going to ludicrous mode or whatever it's called. Uh, and we're going to pick them up and we're going to go get some, maybe coffee, maybe other beverages, maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't know where we're going to go actually. He's uh, sort of his domain, so we're going to let him sort of guide this one since uh, I'm out of my uh, normal zone. I don't know why it's out like Stewie. Time to go, you know, good, uh, good twist, good twist to the end of the story here. Good have a great time. But, uh, yep. Cool. All right. Run because I'm such an athlete. <laughs> Hello? Ryan Rand. Yeah, so can I help you? What's up, buddy? Yeah. This is off pudding. <laughs> Not pudding, it's an apple. Hi, Ian. How's it going, buddy? You, you look you. great. Thank you. You look very self aware. I am so self aware. It's Come on crazy. into my house. Thanks, man. This place is really cool. You know what we should do? We should get in a car and drive around to get a drink. What? That's what we Just a do. couple entrepreneurs in a vehicle getting In a vehicle uh, beverages? getting beverages. That sounds like the name of a hit show. And you know what's really good about the name of the show is it's really easy to remember the acronym, Yivgeber. What is it? E-I-V-G-B, Yivgeber. Yivgeber. Yeah, Yivgeber. That's gonna catch it's on. A really, <laughs> it's really easy Yivgeber. to say. Yeah, it's good for Russians. Yivgeber. Yivgeber. Uh, in order for us to Yivgeber, we're, we're gonna, gonna go through the secret passage. Cool, let's do it. I can, don't you, know. can you find the secret passage? If it's a good secret, then probably not. I don't know. All right, this is Ian tries to find the secret passageway. A story of my sex life, huh? Mm. No, that's not it. Where did they keep the card? Assume it's down. Mm -hmm. Is it through the pantry? Mm. Think you gotta think like Aslan. Oh wait, I see the. This is like the second self. It's like going through the. If it's I'm good, wrong, this is gonna be. I built it. What? Ryan Moran. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a door stop where I see it. I can. Oh wait, is it a slider? <laughs> More like an idiot. That's, that's cool. <laughs> All right, guys, see you later. Right here. All right. Should take it. I have not driven a Tesla. Well, today's not going to be that day. What was the time for? You go to the. Yivgeber. Yivgeber. It's very easy. To, I don't know how you can't remember this. It's for Yivgeber. Entrepreneurs in vehicles getting beverages. It's very easy to say. Yivgeber. I'll, I'll get better. Yivgeber. I'll be better. <laughs> well, so I do want to start with one thing. I want to. You already know about this because of Lionheart, but I, I find that the best way to start any sort of interview, show, whatever, anything, is just to start out with a nice embarrassing story. I'm just trying to hit Morgan. <laughs> uh, well, did I ever tell you the story about Travis Sago? Travis has been my mentor since I was like 19 or 20 years old. 
I went and visited Solo once, and this is right at the beginning. This is still kind of the beginning where I still care about his approval. He's like my mentor. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just got to Travis's house. Like, I just arrived. And he says to me, hey, Ryan, just a heads up, be a little careful. The toilet in the guest room has made, made some funny noises. Okay, that's fine. So I go up there, and I like just arrived put my things down and I go into the bathroom, drop my drawers and start to do business. Well, you know, halfway through, 30 minutes in, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a good house guest. Courtesy. I'm gonna do a courtesy flush. So I do a courtesy flush and I go back to, you know, thinking. But then I realized I never heard the whoosh. And so I look down between my legs and my poo is chasing me. It's rising oh, with the tide. No, oh. I basically feel the water hit my nuts and a oh, cooling sensation yeah, nothing like some made me jump it. up and go, woo, woo, woo. And then, you know, I, I stood over the toilet chanting and praying until the most horrifying thing ever, the water starts to pour over. Like, my, the pool like, like the, the actual... water starts to flow oh, over the oh, side. Oh. And it didn't stop. It kept going and it kept like, it's now like a cartoon is filling up the entire bathroom. Oh, and and so, your poop's in it. And my poop's in it. Oh. And I'm grabbing their towels. I'm grabbing everything I can, throwing it out and throwing it around like, oh no, what, what, like, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? While I'm still freaking out about it, I hear the world stops for just a second. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm like, oh yeah, what? And I hear Travis in his sweet southern drawl say, Ryan, are you taking a bath? <laughs> There's water dripping onto our bed. Oh, from downstairs. <laughs> oh, from downstairs. And it was the most horrible, horrible feeling in my soul so at this moment. So you essentially, literally hit the bed. <laughs> I who <laughs> I you I in his bed. His and his wife's bed. And I about cried and I opened the door and I was like, the toilet is over. Oh, man. That's pretty, that's pretty rough. Can you do me a favor and count backwards from three? Three, two, one. Boom! <laughs> Boom! I had a feeling and it still got me. <laughs> when I sold my company a year and a half ago, I decided I wanted to get a car so fast I could blow a woman's clothes off. Nice. And then I put the in. Yeah, well, I'm taking them off. Yeah. Don't you worry. Yeah. I'm a little hairier than most women. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are recording us. What the? Hey, so what, get out of here. what are you doing? Look at, who are you? God, when you get this famous, Gosh. when you get to 1,300 <laughs> followers on Instagram, man, this is the type <laughs> of shit that happens. First of all, I want to talk to you about this Tesla because I've never heard too many people actually talk about them. They always just they have them. And then. They you know, drive what are you? Oh my god, that's just uncomfortable. It's a little, I haven't been a part of this yet. So this how is, is totally it? safe. Do you think this so? This is totally safe. Do you really think so? Totally, totally safe. Look, I've almost wrecked only oh! like seven times. That is weird, man. I'll tell you, I'm a... This is, there's a little bit of uh, tension here for me doing this. Are you even, it's breaking? I'm not doing nothing. Can you nothing. set the screen? Actually, it'll this just part stay, is uh, a little bit uncomfortable. This part's oh. uncomfortable. No! That is weird! That is odd! That is actually odd. The, it's really hard for me not to break. If you, like it, it's not like it breaks super early. That was like a Correct. late yeah. break. It's not like, it's like, kind of like, oh, I'm about to smash this car. It's like, I'm, it basically drives like a drunk person. <laughs> That's about as safe as it. Like, I'm not, I'm not accelerating How trusting, right now. really? I'm not so it's it. just, what is it doing? Is it just, it's, it's reading, basing it off it's of that person? truck in front of me, driving the Mustang behind us crazy. So you want to do, do things when you, do you have to do things while you drive? So many things. <laughs> So what could a things. what could a young man do with two free hands and well, without a wheel? You know how productive I am. I wank while I drive. <laughs> That's I am not gonna waste a minute. Okay, productivity <laughs> is everything. I used to masturbate at home like an, like a normal adult. When I realized like I could caveman. double down, <laughs> I just spit like a caveman. I am on my way to a business meeting 
wanking while listening to a podcast and doubling down on some subconscious binaural beats, increasing my productivity at all times. I don't know if we're ever going to turn. I don't think we're allowed to ever. This is ridiculous. Hey, man, this is crazy. You can gun it. Gun it. This is the Tesla. Ludicrous mode. It wasn't nearly as uh, it wasn't as, uh, it wasn't exciting as, as we hoped. Can I do a decaf almond milk latte, please? And the wine. Where's your smell? And a wine. I'm get you drunk. <laughs> it's oh, on getting beverages, not coffee. I specifically yeah, made okay. it not getting coffee okay. because I wanted to branch out. <laughs> We're just recording our conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not a. We'll go outside. It's not a, it's not a hidden through. camera show. It's a. It's a pretty. It's, not a it's a camera pretty, show. It's called is a blatant, that, is that blatantly obvious <laughs> camera show. It's where you can see the cameras. It's, it's a new spin on an old classic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel ridiculous wearing this jacket. But you look. Doesn't he look handsome? That see, was that's, no. That's oh a my trap. god! You missed that's that. That's a trap. That was the best. She. She that thought so was, before I put the jacket on. What? It's a, that's a lie. That's a lie. That that's a lie. Bold I, I, lie. I ever heard one. How did he look before the jacket, or that's, is that? Yeah, that's a that's ten out of ten. Is what you said. <laughs> did you say that? I, I did yeah. hear her say that. All right. So what are we talking about? So I have a couple of questions though, <laughs> that are more serious. Well, I, I was thinking we would we should Im, we should impersonate people we know the whole time. That'd be really funny for the people we know. Yeah. <laughs> be really good for a broad audience. Uh, yeah, watch this uh, this show. It's called Ivgubba. These guys. These guys. It's called Ivgubba. And these guys did impressions of people they knew the whole time. <laughs> it felt like I was at a dinner where everybody's telling inside jokes and it I was, was super great. uncomfortable. It was great. Except I could have turned it off and I didn't because the guys were so mm -hmm. handsome. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, it's so much hands, you know, it's gonna, it's just That's, downhill from It's here. hard, it's hard being objectified on the internet like we are. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were gonna say objectively handsome. <laughs> <laughs> it's it hard is being difficult. objectively handsome. It is know? difficult. You, you know, know, when you got a jawline like You mean this. subjectively? No, objectively <laughs> handsome. I'm tired of being subjectified. Subjectified. <laughs> That's hot and you made me laugh. It's a bad combination. <laughs> so burned of things. your nose. That's what I was going for. I do genuinely feel though, like, and people are like, oh, you, you're white. You, how can you? It's like nothing exists in our world. Like, upper, Be, middle yeah. upper class white. Nothing well. happens in the white upper class male yeah. privileged world. I say you don't know how hard it's been going from <laughs> from a middle and you have an from accent a middle a girls throw themselves you at you just because of how you talk you don't know you don't even hard. know what it's like <laughs> I don't. you're British privileged I don't I have it's double white privilege oh, to you that's <laughs> you you don't know the I have struggle to kill it okay you do not know the struggle of I have to work six. three times as hard you might I, I have but to I'll drive that Tesla around let, let, yeah, what is that? What's that like an like? average white privilege person oh, to get God. girls? That's what I have to do. You don't. You just have to talk. You, you just have to be like, hi, sorry, do you have a bit of sex? <laughs> uh, I'd prefer a little more than a bit of it, please. That's. It's you don't know. People want so much. <laughs> want so much from me. But I'm telling you, man, you don't know what it's like growing up as a six foot one, athletic yeah. male yeah. with higher than average intelligence and an English accent in a country that idolizes the way that I speak. You don't know the plights of going from middle, middle upper class white suburbia to now upper class white You're male. Right. I have <laughs> no idea what it's like. I had to work to lose my virginity at 26. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> really? I had to work hard at it. 26? I had to kill it. And then you got a girl pregnant like the next day. Please don't call it a girl sorry, pregnant. Sorry, that was the wrong way. <laughs> sorry, I, I mean, I feel like, what, was that like the third time you had sex then you got pregnant? I think, I think it had been at least six. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, yeah, I was having this conversation with uh, some other white male rich friends of mine <laughs> about- The only people I associate with. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about marriage and like, if marriage is on trend or off trend, and um, one of the one of the guys in the group recently was got engaged, and he's talking about how it was like, you know, it was always a hell yes for him with this person, and somebody else in the group was um, had been absent for a long time. It was like, by choice. Like, 
Yeah, right. <laughs> not like me. <laughs> <laughs> not why, like why, me. Why did you wait till you were 26? Not accidentally uh, because, abstinent. Because nobody would me. That's, <laughs> that is why I went. Was it for, for, for religious reasons? No, maybe for them. I don't mm. know. Uh. And so, and then, and then there was me who waited, you know, was, and did the right thing and had a kid and I'm really happy and I'm like, Pam and I have a wonderful relationship and we've had to navigate it differently than most people. So there's, there's like a real weird mix of opinions about whether or not marriage is, it's like, it's like no longer the only way. No, it's, I mean, there's a lot of different ways now and it's, it is funny though, all the connotation of the right thing to do and also how often that ends up not working out as well. Yeah, I mean, my parents did the right thing. And they were both religious and were married for 25 years and miserable. Mm -hmm. And neither one of them ever remarried after they divorced. So it's like, you can think there's a right way, but this, like life, yeah. life, life is long and surprising. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to see like, is, is there gonna be a resurgence of what's normal or is there just no more normal anymore? I don't know. I don't know. I think we're reverting back to grunting. I think we're moving back to caveman days because everything people say now is offensive. You see, that it's would just, make... We're just moving back to like, we can't say words anymore because words are offensive. I think that would make picking up girls a lot easier. For just me, grunting. anyway. I would, I would think about it. I would overthink it a lot less. Uh -huh. I, I wouldn't go up to a girl and be like, hey, do you like do, is the sandwiches? Are, do you like sandwiches? Are you into bread wrapped objects? <laughs> <laughs> objects that are. I'll be over here if you need me. Bread, bread on one side. If and you also decide you're attracted to this, other. you can come calling. <laughs> no, no, the grunting would make it easier for me because it'd just be. Mm. Uh, mm. I feel like I was designed uh, for it. Uh, I was designed to grunt at people. Well, you were designed I, for it? I feel like some people are closer to, to the, to the less evolved human. I think that's me. I think I'm right on the edge of mm. like, like I've I've been saying. I I believe that I scientifically get stronger when I growl when I lift. Yeah. And I've been doing this. Fact. And I really like deeply believe this. And it's weird. And that's why I lift at home because <laughs> it's weird if you growl at a gym in public. But I, I do feel it all the like, time. I don't even dude, care. I do it all the time. It's like just like a. Well, it's also I think it helps engage diaphragmatic breathing, which helps is that, stabilize. Is that why? I think that's part of it. I also think that humans are designed to growl just like other animals are, but we've stopped. If a wolf growls, you don't go, "Ooh, that's a bit. That's actually a bit weird." If you could stop, <laughs> stop howling. That would be great. If you could quit the howling, that would be. That's just like me trying to negotiate. When my daughter was like eight months old, Pam would make fun of me because I would try to reason with her. She'd be screaming, I'd be like, now listen, listen. The and computer. Say, stop, it's a baby. It can't hear you. Stop, stop doing that. Like, I do it with Poseidon. I think Poseidon. it's very intelligent. I talk to him like he's a human. Your behavior is absolutely ridiculous <laughs> right now, sir. If you could change, that would be wonderful for me. Please stop licking my face. No, do, you, I, do you want to get married one day? I don't know. I guess for me, one thing I've always known is that I want to be a dad. That I've been certain of since I was a kid, since my I can, relationship I can with tell my you dad how, is. If you need any, any help with that? I don't know how you've escaped that, dude. For I as don't long know how have. I have either. I'm so lucky that I don't know. About you've it told me children. things that made me realize how lucky you are. <clears throat> don't record this. <laughs> yeah. No. Stop. Dude. Stop the recording dude, my, right now. No. <laughs> I have gotten remarkably <laughs> lucky. Maybe that's one of the things God does. He's like, all right, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be an English white guy in America, don't I'm waste make it. You super resistant <laughs> to pregnancy and STDs. I'm gonna give you that immune system, but you're gonna get Crohn's. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take a lot of poop and no STDs. Oh uh, well, I had a lot of poop too. It was so, just changing someone so else's So speaking poop and speaking diapers. of poop, I would like to ask you about your poops since Lionheart. Yeah, We've talked I've about had it a lot. Some amazing poops. So you went to the Lionheart workshop, and since then, you've had so people have physical reactions to it in general. Like when I went through my first intensive, my right ankle stopped working altogether the third <laughs> day. It just didn't work. I could not even go up the stairs to where I was going. Like I had to like double like use the rails on both sides. I also the third night threw up quite a bit. This is a really good way to tell people to go and do this. Um, 
But there are physical reactions to emotional circumstances. Yeah, of course there are. Yeah, and so, but afterward, but you've been having these remarkable poos, basically, from what you, you text me and you go, the poops, the poops, Ian. <laughs> the, poops. the poops, Ian. <laughs> and you asked, I can't believe the poops. You asked, where is it all coming from? Right. Where has it been all this time? I <laughs> it's been <laughs> stored up. There is tension. It's been. Yeah, but what does that mean? Like, where did it go previously? It just. Floated around. Just and stayed in it there? It just got stuck in there. Think about people who take, do cleanses and things, and all of the stuff that you can literally have built up physically inside of your system for years well, and years. all mine has been coming out. Good. You feel lighter. That's so, so people always report, they're like, I feel lighter. And maybe it's literally physically <laughs> they're feeling lighter from having released physical poundage. So I... Uh, I, I think you know, I, I, I do a lot of therapy and personal development work anyway. I, I don't actually I know enjoy you did some before. I don't even like personal development work anymore. It's like a nice entry point, but I mean, we're all products of who we were as children, right? And what yep. happened to us. And so personal development is almost like, I think personal development is who you become to cover up what happened to you when you were a child? I think that's a very good way to put it. I think it's trying to use the mind to solve problems that are not in the mind, that are far deeper. It's, it's mm, ways I to outthink put it that your way. problems in a lot of ways. Well, I mean, all problems, like all things that happen, you start with the mind and then you store them in your body. Exactly. And yeah, then it's like, it's deeper. developing the new habit in your mind, the new thinking pattern. That's, that's personal development. I guess trying to use thoughts as opposed to going to the root of yeah. the cause. It's trying to outthink the behavior instead of yeah, where sure, does this behavior come sure. from. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That feels right that to me. It feels right, which we have feelings now because we've <laughs> opened them up and have access. Oh, I've, I've, always, I've always been a feeler, but... Uh, um, so I, I'm very in tune, and you even made the comment to me a year ago, me being hard charging versus now me. You, you, you notice a difference in me even yeah, before even I before, went through. Yes, before Lionheart. Lionheart, you had already changed. And You'd opened up a lot, softened, like in a good way. Like the edges around you weren't so like, hey, I'm Ryan and this is how I need to show up. And right. everything's about an acquisition. So many people like in the teen state are in the, the acquisition focus. They're trying to acquire knowledge, acquire people, acquire money, acquire things in order to feel okay. And to cover yeah, up totally for me. the exposed and that was, child. Yeah, that's totally me. And so now what I'm realizing, um, and, and, and a lot of this goes back to the stuff you talk about, you and Brent talk about, which is we're all kind of trying to get back to who we were as children anyway. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I, I chatted about with you was I've always been in my head about I don't know how to have fun. Mm -hmm. But the truth is if I go back to like the traumas the day before the traumas happened to me. Yeah, you I, did. I, I loved it. I, I had a ton of fun. Right? And as I've continued to like explore that area and like what happened to me, really between the ages of 11 and 14. Well, like, you became an adult then. Yeah. That was when you yeah, had yeah, to take yeah. over I had to in your family and you had to literally, you couldn't be a kid anymore. Right, I skipped. Because you had to take care of stuff. I, at least that was my perception, yeah, where I, had to, I basically skipped teenage years and went mm -hmm. right to being an adult. When it was right after you had the big experience, right, of like having a lot of fun performing and being on right. stage. And right. Then and then I just shut that, that down. Basically shut down. Right. Shut that down and became provider. And so now Which when Which is I, just not what an 11 year old's supposed to do. An 11 year old's not supposed to take care of their mother. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be a kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have to carry that on and then you become that adult and then you never get to... And then for you, you shut off all the fun. Right. Which isn't fun. Right. <laughs> You're right, exactly. And I, I now think most entrepreneurs are operating from a place of trying to either prove something or take care of someone because of an old wound. Well, look at all the relationships that entrepreneurs get into. They get into relationships with women that they want to fix. Because when you're fixing things, you don't have to focus on yourself. So you find a girl who seemingly has some things, and even if they're not broken, up, you find something to fix because that's what you do. And we fix things. I solve problems. I'm a problem solver. <laughs> nothing, nothing a woman wants more than a problem solver. Oh, I love it when, he, when I tell him about my problems and he solves them all for me and invalidates all of my emotions that I'm having about them. There's nothing sexier than a man who just disregards the way that I'm feeling. But it's, it's, it's very true in so much of, and that's the thing I think that people struggle with too coming into Lionheart is 
well, how do I become successful if I'm not trying to fix my brokenness? Because that's where they're coming from. Yeah, it's, I don't feel like I'm enough right now. I think we should um, bring some levity into it yeah. on the ride back. Yeah, shall we? Maybe do some impressions of people. We shall did we? It. We shall. Let's get out of here. Hey, we did it. We did it, dude. That was good. That was very good. Maybe that'll be how I end each one of these is we yeah. knuckle. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Entrepreneurs okay. in vehicles getting beverages. Say Evgeba together. One, two, three. Evgeba created the world. He did. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>